Hi, my name's Ben Howard. Welcome to this video which supports the blog post about uh, producing nice resource and capacity graphs in Power BI. So the first thing we're going to do is go and get data. And I'm going to go and get data from my project online tenant. So I'm asked for the URL. Oh, that's just for typical um, project data API uh, OData feed URL. OK, so that will go through and authenticate me. I've logged in before. Uh, recently, so I'm already authenticated. What tables do I now want? Well, I really want assignments and assignment time phase data set. I'd like the resources and resource time phase data set. And then I'm going to take the time set as well. So those are the five tables that um, I need for this. Now, what's happen going to happen is obviously uh, those are going to be downloaded uh, via the data feed and I'll see the data appear in the field well. Before we do that, though, we want to go and make sure that the data is connected up, that we have the right uh, relationships between the tables. Um, so we'll do that using this button here uh, as the first thing. So that we go and tie up our time set data set with the other tables. Now, if you um, download the Power BI template file that I've produced as part of this blog, you won't need to do this, uh, but I'm showing you this from scratch. OK, so that data's loaded. We can see the information in the field well on the right hand side here. As I said, let's go and have a look at the relationships. So we can see what's been um, loaded for us and we can see that Power BI has already created some relationships. Uh, this one's inactive simply because we already have this relationship and this relationship. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to take the time by day here and connect that into the resource time phase data set to create that relationship and we want to do the same to the assignment time phase data set as well. So everything now uh, becomes hooked together and I can go back to my Power BI canvas and start drawing on here. So what do we want? Well, we want a line chart and we want a line chart with initially our resource time phase data set. We want the capacity. So I'm going to just drag that onto the values field. Um, that's OK, but we want to display that over a set of time. So I'm going to go to my time set and choose time by day and put that along the axis. And you'll notice that that uh, creates for me a nice capacity going down. So I'm looking here at average of capacity. Actually, I want to have some of capacity. OK, so it's slightly different chart, but I'm getting some data. Um, now, I know my time set has a lot of data in there, so I'm going to go and put a uh, filter on here. Uh, where we're just looking at uh, a couple of years in this instance. So I'll choose basic filtering and I'm going to go and choose 2017 and 2018. So there's 2017 and there's 2018. So that's all uh, well and good for me at the moment. Uh, the chart doesn't mean much. Let's just drill into that a little bit um just by expanding down one so we're now looking at year and quarter and now we can look at year and quarter month and this is starting to i wouldn't say make sense but give me some some more realistic data okay so on this chart at the moment uh we've got basically just the capacity for all of my resources let's go and add in the assignment work or the assigned work so under the assigned time phase data set i've got this field assignment work we'll just go and put that under capacity and you can see we've now got some data in here and effectively some non-contiguous data uh, which is our issue um, so what do we do now well if I come here and I just go and put the feel a, a filter or a slicer on here then we can go and put resource names onto the slicer and resource names of course are in the resources field or resources table so resource name there we go. We'll take that. We'll drag that into the field there. OK, so you can see what happens, of course, is when I select a resource, I get the work and capacity. And then if I don't get any work, I don't get any values. And if I had some more work, it would uh, appear elsewhere. And that's really our issue. So how do we solve that? Well, we solve it by using uh, our DAX measure. So let's go and create a DAX measure. Now, where am I going to create that? I can create that in any table or I can once I've created it, I can put it in a new table. I'm going to create it because it's to do with assignment time phase data. I'm going to create it in here. So I click on there and create new measure. Note we could have done that from uh, the tab up here as well. Uh, on one of the other tabs, I've got to create new measure field. So it opens up this little formula bar for me and I can go and quickly grab my measure. 
So that's it. And literally just paste it in there. And if all is well, when I press return, um, that will go away and create that measure for me. Um, and we should be able to find that. Here it is uh, as a value in the um, homed, if you like. The measure is homed on this table uh, for the assignment time phase data piece. So if I select our visualization here, we can go and add that into the visualization and get rid of assignment work. So now you see uh, I actually have a, a slightly different graph, but one which has zeros in it. And that's really the whole point. So it's a nice graph and I can choose different resources and see the different amount of works or capacity they've got. And of course, I can drill in uh, onto a day by day basis, which at the moment uh, is just a bit much. You'd probably want to put a time slice filter on here to do that. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and uh, speak to you soon. Bye bye.